I've been using Windows laptops and desktops my entire life from ultrabooks to water-cooled gaming PCs that I built myself. I've always been a PC enthusiast, but over the last few years, I've found myself picking up more and more Apple products until just recently I realized that I am entirely surrounded by the notoriously divisive devices that make up the Apple ecosystem. I use my MacBook Pro every single day for my full-time job of video editing, content creation, and a bunch of other creative tasks, but I also use it when I'm off the clock for or watching movies and TV and playing some games. And recently I've been getting into projection software. This has been my experience from switching from mostly Windows to mostly Mac. There have been a lot of unexpected differences, so I wanted to share them. This isn't gonna be a Windows bad, Mac good type of video. This is just my perspective as a Windows user and a Mac OS user, and I'm just trying to get my workflow done. So these are some of the features that have been actually useful for my workflow as someone who now uses a Mac and an iPhone and PS, the iPhone is filming this video right now. Starting out with handoff. Handoff is basically when you're doing something on your phone and you go to use your Mac, it's automatically going to be up on your Mac. For example, let's say I'm reading an article on my phone and I walk up to my Mac and unlock it. You can see that the article is going to be right there in the bottom right in the dock on your Mac. And if you click that, it will go directly to wherever the place that you were reading was and even scroll down to the same section of the page. So you're exactly where you left off on your phone. Next is universal clipboard. And that's where when you copy something on your Mac, you can then paste it on your phone and vice versa. And that might not sound very useful, but I can't even tell you how many times when I was on a Windows PC, I was trying to move something from my desktop to my phone and I'd have to look at it and retype it or something like that or email it to myself or something inconvenient. And now all you do is command C to copy it from your Mac and then go and paste it on your iPhone and it works totally seamlessly. Next is tab groups. And this might be super niche to me, but I'm constantly researching a bunch of different things for different work projects. And on Safari, you can do different tab groups, which is basically you can save a group of tabs like the 10 or 20 tabs that you're working on, call it something like research for an iPhone or whatever, and then it's stuck as a tab group and you can reopen it later. But the cool part is that also applies to your phone. So if you make a tab group on your Mac, it's automatically going to be on your phone and your iPad and anything else. And in that same vein, you can also see what tabs are open on your Mac when you're on your iPhone or vice versa. So if you have a tab open on your phone and you wanted to look at it on your Mac, you just open up Safari and it will show in the Safari window that that, hey, these are the tabs that are open right now on your iPhone. And I find that super convenient. Next is using your iPad as an external monitor for your Mac. And it is so nice when you're on the go. All it takes is one click and they just have to be on the same Wi-Fi network. And then you're automatically using your iPad as an external monitor. And I don't know how Apple did it so well, but there is almost no delay. Like you would think these are attached with the cable by how well they're working. And it's super easy to set up and it's super easy to tear down. For me, I use my laptop on the go a lot. And although I have the biggest laptop they make, the 16 inch, it's still not enough screen real estate for everything that I like to do, like video editing. And just having that extra screen real estate that the iPad can offer that's super easy to take with you is a game changer for video editing or whatever you're wanting to do that you need a lot of screen real estate on the go. And when you're on the go, you're probably gonna be using battery power. And this 16 inch M1 Max MacBook Pro has phenomenal battery. If I'm doing light tasks, like just web browsing, watching YouTube videos, checking my email, typing up stuff, that sort of thing, I'm gonna get between 10 and 15 hours of battery life, which is crazy good. And then if I'm doing something more intensive, like 4K video editing or gaming or something like that, then I generally get between five and seven hours of battery life, which is still really good. And that whole time I'm getting full performance even when I'm unplugged from the wall. And my experience with Windows gaming laptops has been their performance can be really good, but as soon as you unplug them from the wall, you'll get like half of that performance. It goes down dramatically. And then even when you are unplugged from the wall and the performance is worse, there's still no way you're going to be getting this kind of battery life while doing the same types of tasks. So while I've enjoyed using Windows gaming laptops to edit off of in the past, as soon as you unplugged them, their performance went down so dramatically that you didn't ever want to be unplugged and that changes how you use a laptop. And in that same vein is power efficiency. This thing is crazy power efficient. I plug it up to my 32 inch 4K LG display and that can provide 60 watts of power through the USB type 
Type-C port, which is really convenient because then you can just plug in one Type-C port and you're powering your device and you're getting monitor output and you can hook up some external drives and all that stuff and it's really convenient. But it's only 60 watts of power and most high-powered Windows laptops just can't operate at full power when getting only 60 watts of charging. They usually need dramatically more. And on that note of needing less power, because it uses less power, it is much quieter. Right now, I've got it fully running. I've got my script and some other stuff up right here and the fans are totally off and they're almost always off. The only times the fans will spin up is when you're doing like a 4K render or something like that. And then they do spin up, but they're almost never loud. They're almost never even audible. But when I've used other gaming laptops in the past, the fans are super loud and they're so loud that they actually get picked up by my mic, which is a huge problem. So that's why I love that this is virtually silent almost all the time. So I can have it right next to my mic and it doesn't cause any fan noise. Also, I can unlock my Mac with my Apple Watch, which which is really convenient. I just walk up to it, hit any button on the Mac to wake it up or lift the lid. And as long as my Apple Watch is close and unlocked, it unlocks the MacBook, which is just convenient. And in my experience, apps, even from third-party developers, are really well optimized to run on your Mac and your iPhone. And that hasn't been my experience with Windows and Android, generally speaking. Like for example, I didn't like how the notch looked on the MacBook Pro series of laptops, but there's this developer who made an app called Top Notch, which will black out that entire bar. So it looks like your menu bar is just completely hidden in your bezel and it looks really cool. And not only does the app work exactly how it says it does, but it's very aesthetically pleasing and it looks like something that Apple would have designed themselves as far as when you're actually using the software. It's really simple, it's really small, it's really intuitive, and that's it. And I hear a lot of people say that they don't care about the aesthetics of like how software looks, and I think that's totally great, nothing wrong with that. I used to say that, but then once I started to use software that actually looks good, I realized, oh no, I do prefer software that looks nice, it's just more pleasing to use. But that's more of a personal preference. So if you don't care, then you don't care. iCloud Keychain is so clutch. Any passwords that you save on your Mac or your iPhone are automatically synced across. So you don't have to worry about remembering your passwords or you put it in on your phone, but now you can't remember what it is when you're trying to log in on your computer. It's all synced across seamlessly and it is so convenient. And they even take it one step further when like if you're logging into your bank account and they send you a security code and they text it to you or they email it to you, Mac OS and iOS are smart enough so that if they see that you get a security code in your messages or in your email, they will automatically populate it for you in your web browser so you don't even have to go looking for the security code. It is seriously convenient. And everyone knows you can use your phone as a hotspot for your laptop, but Apple takes it one step further where with one click in your Wi-Fi settings, you can just connect to your phone's hotspot. You don't have to go turning on your hotspot on your phone and then go enter your Wi-Fi password on your laptop. It's just one click and you're done. Oh, and the Find My Network Network is so clutch. I have an iPhone, a Mac, a watch, AirPods, and an iPad. And at any given time, I can go into Find My and ping where any of them are. I can make them play a sound if I can't find it, or I can see exactly on the map where those devices are at any given time. It's just so nice if you're prone to losing stuff like I am. And one other thing that's really convenient about having the watch is that at any time I can ping my phone from my watch. So if you're like me and you're constantly setting your phone down and then forgetting where you set it, it makes it way easier to find your phone. Oh, and speaking of the watch, right now I'm using using the watch as a viewfinder for my phone, which is the camera, and you can see it right there. I'm using my watch so that I can see and I can frame up my shot exactly how I want it, which is really convenient. And on that note, you can use your iPhone as your camera or your microphone for a Zoom call or a FaceTime call or something like that. I've had it where I'm in a super busy spot like an airport or a coffee shop. And if I try and use my MacBook speakers, you just can't hear me that well over the Zoom call. But if I switch it to use my iPhone microphone and then I put my iPhone right up to my face, then they can hear me just fine. And it, it actually sounds really good for what it is. And it's just seamless. It's just a one click fix. This might seem a little silly, but something I use every day and I find genuinely useful is the reminders app. My girlfriend and I have a shared grocery list. And with the reminders app, I can add stuff from my Mac or from my iPhone or from even my watch. And we can both see the same grocery list. And then if one of us goes to the grocery store, you don't have to text, hey, what did you want? You can just look at the grocery list and see and then check stuff off as you're going. And it makes it so much easier to have a shared grocery list. And 
and you know no one's gonna do an Apple ecosystem video without mentioning airdrop I almost didn't want to mention it because everybody talks about it but genuinely it is incredibly useful like right now I'm recording footage on my iPhone and after this video is over and once I want to start editing it I'm just going to airdrop from my phone to my Mac and start editing no cables required it's really fast it's really convenient and I absolutely love it but the same thing goes for my iPad I am constantly journaling and taking notes on my iPad or even just doing doodles and drawings and stuff and with airdrop with one click I can just send the note or drawing or whatever it is from my iPad to my Mac and now I got it to do whatever it is I want and speaking of those drawings and doodles and notes and whatever you always want to keep all your important data backed up to a cloud and iCloud backup makes it super easy to back up everything that you've got on your Mac and your iPhone and it syncs it all seamlessly you never have to notice as long as it's plugged into the power and on a Wi-Fi network it's going to automatically back up to the cloud and anything that's on that cloud that's on my Mac is accessible when I'm on my phone or it's accessible on my phone when I'm on my Mac or anything like that and that goes not just for documents from your Mac but also photos and texts and passwords and anything else that you want to have backed up it's backed up and iMessage I know people talk about it all the time so I'm gonna try and be brief but one of the things I do regularly is I can text people large video files and it just goes straight through and if the file is too big for it to send over iMessage which I think is over like three and a half gigs or something like that it will automatically upload whatever the clip is to iCloud and then send them a link so then they can use that link and then access the cloud and then they can see whatever it is and it's totally seamless and it's really convenient when I used to want to share big files from my computer to people I used to upload it to Google Drive then I would get on my phone and then I would copy the link and I would text them the Google Drive and then they could go look at it but this is just so much more seamless you can send it right from your computer and if you've ever been on a plane and you want to watch a movie with the person sitting next next to you but just on the same phone you can do two sets of airpods connect them both to the same phone and share audio between the two and it's really nice and while you're traveling about you can use tap to pay from your watch or your phone which just will pay with whatever credit card you have on file which is really convenient and then they also have apple pay which if you're on a site and the site supports it which is a lot of sites these days then when you go to order something instead of filling out your credit card information and your address and everything like that your billing you just hit pay with apple pay it asks for your fingerprint and you're done that's as much as it takes and it makes it so much more convenient to shop online at sites that you don't frequently shop at oh and you can seamlessly hand off phone calls from your Mac to your phone to your watch and any direction between the three so one thing that happens to me a lot is I'm working on my computer I get a phone call I answer it on my computer I talk for a little bit and then I'm like okay if I'm gonna be talking on the phone I want to go for a walk so then I can just pick up my phone it'll automatically switch to my phone and I can walk out the door and I'm good to go and then I'm still on the same phone call and it's just really convenient and this is a little one but photos sync across all devices I'm the type of person where I take a ton of photos and videos but I don't really like deleting all the photos and going through them on my phone because the screen's just kind of small I'm someone who likes to do it on my computer so I can go on my Mac and I can see them all at larger sizes on my monitor or whatever and then I can delete a bunch and it will automatically sync that with my phone which just makes photo and file management easier for me so these are some of the the features that I noticed most when switching to a MacBook from a Windows device and I want to be perfectly clear I do not think that MacBooks or Apple in general is perfect they have a lot of their own issues and if you want me to make a video talking about those issues just let me know in the comment section below all right I've been Sam thanks for watching the video and I'll see you guys in the next one peace